The seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 58, making the flange fittings for the saddle tank water balancing pipe, using a 9 sixteenths of an inch die in the lathe. I'm commencing the job by cutting a piece of phosphor bronze using my bandsaw. I could part this off, but I would have to use my larger lathe, and I try not to use that because it's not generally what people have in the workshop. Here it is, it's big, it's heavy and very good. It didn't take long to saw through the piece of leaded bronze and very soon a chunk of it was sat on the bench. Here it is. The usual method for making the parts that you'll see shortly would be to fit a long length of phosphor bronze bar in the chuck of the Smart and Brown and then simply machine the individual components and part them off. But because this is a tutorial I'm going to show a different way of doing the job same end result, just a different way of doing it and possibly it's a bit more long-winded. You'll see what I mean when you've watched the episode. The job begins by facing across the front of the piece of leaded bronze, followed by turning it longitudinally. This is a quite wasteful procedure. A lot of metal is going in the chip tray. I suppose I could have fabricated these fittings, but I'm going to make two of them from this one lump of phosphor bronze. I'm reducing the diameter to 9 sixteenths of an inch, which I will thread to take this nut. To start with, I am going to turn the centre bit to the length of the nut, but it will end up being shorter. So that viewers don't slip into a coma, I've increased the speed of the video. This is running at 400%, four times normal speed. I'm using the modified negative rake carbide tip tool. I showed the modification in a video a while ago. This cutting tool is designed for a much larger lathe, but by machining the shank so it fits in my boxford, it works very well and the tip is lasting a long time. I'm using my normal method of turn it, check it with the micrometer, turn it a bit more until eventually the micrometer fits on the part that I've machined. When I try and do it by numbers, I end up with something that is actually less accurate because my mental management of numbers is not good. After I'd finished the turning operation, I threaded the part using my extremely old and very rusty tailstock die holder. In this clip I'm checking that the nut fits on the end and it was actually a bit tight, so I adjusted the die in the die holder, took another cut and now the nut fits perfectly. With the nut firmly in place on the thread, I turned the part around, fitted it back in the chuck, holding it by the nut, and tightened the chuck so it was very firmly held in place. I faced across the end, centre drilled it and fitted a life centre and here I'm longitudinally turning. To show how firmly the part is held in the chuck just by using the union nut I faced across the end and here I'm turning it without the life centre in place. The part was too long and I trimmed it to size that's why the centre hole has disappeared. As you can clearly see, I've threaded and fitted a union nut to this side too. But this time, to obtain the perfect length for the union nut, I shortened the threaded part so the nut went further onto the thread and looked a lot better. I needed to make the thread shorter to allow for the flange on the pipe union itself. In exactly the same way as I did with the other side, I centre drilled it, then I used a twist drill, but this time I'm going all the way through until the twist drill breaks through inside the part where the other hole is. You may be wondering why I didn't drill all the way through from the other end. The problem is small twist drills can wander and I wanted to make sure that the cone was exactly in the centre at both ends. I know this looks like a long-winded job and it probably is but it was very enjoyable and it actually entertained me while I was making the video. What I'm doing now with the live centre in place once again is parting the component off. That's splitting the one component exactly into two. I'm using this thin parting tool which I do find very useful. The final part of the job, and I need to do this for both of them, is to reduce the thickness of the flange and then machine a 3 8 of an inch diameter register that fits into the hole on the saddle tank. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a very wasteful job my lathe is covered in very sharp swarf and some of it's stuck in my fingers and it's currently hurting. 
but one must suffer for one's art, darling. That's a well-known old show business saying. Now the flange is the correct thickness, I need to turn the centre part of it to 9 sixteenths of an inch to fit in the hole in the saddle tank. This is only a shallow register because I don't want it to stick up too far in the saddle tank. The water takeoff and the drain valve will be fitted in the centre of the balancing pipe. And that is why the register needs to be more or less the same thickness as the tank itself. Here you see what I've been making. The register fits in the hole, which locates the part in the correct position, and here you see both of them, one at each side. In the next episode, using my rotary table, I will be drilling these fittings to take four bolts, which when tightened with nuts on the inside, will hold the flanges firmly against the tank. I've just noticed on the 916 die, it says 916 BSCY, I'm assuming that BSCY stands for British Standard Cycle. I need to fit a special inlet union on one side. What I'm doing is measuring the centre of this existing hole and I've marked the position to drill another hole below it. This is for the water bypass from the axle pumps. The axle pumps are working all the time the engine is running and without a water bypass valve returning the water to the tank the boiler would just fill up to the top, which would not be a good thing for quite a few reasons. Here's a close-up of the word bypass that I wrote on the tank. By altering the position of the bypass valve, you can change the amount of water that goes back to the tank or into the boiler. The idea is very simple, very basic, but it works, just like me. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.